Okay, folks, let's get going. All right, how's everybody holding up? Somebody close those doors over on that side. Hey, Rob, or somebody close the door. Yeah. Give the door. Thank you. <laughs> All righty, here we go. Let's do some awake exercises. Uh, it's been a long day. We're, we're soldiering through. Everybody, everybody, arms up and stretch. There we go. Okay. Huh? Really? Okay, good stretching. All right. See no, no, no. The karaoke is later tonight. So true story. Um, the uh, the KJ actually asked if he could come in a superhero outfit. So I'm actually really stoked about the karaoke tonight. I'm hoping I'm hoping it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, they seemed very enthusiastic about the event. So. Um, and again, Matt Miller, Kesha. Alrighty. Done. 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 Boom. Alright guys, it's time for Make Your Case. Zone to Revamp. That was, a, that, was a, that was almost like the Price is Right sound. Bum, bum, ba -da. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do that this time. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the Bob the the, the Bob Barker thing there. This mic is almost like a Bob Barker mic, actually. <laughs> Ouch. We've we've gonged all that we're gonna gong. Alrighty, so uh, let's let's get started, folks. Uh, this is Make Your Case Zone Revamp, and I'm gonna go ahead and introduce our panelists. Down at the very end, I believe. There she is. Okay, cool. Uh, we have our world artist extraordinaire, Addison Forfa Fury. Uh, I just like blanked out her last name for a second. Probably because it's going to change soon. Anyways, uh, next to Addison, we have uh, the uh, Will Wheaton esque um, John Protean Hagner. <laughs> Don't blame me. That's all the issue was saying when you were talking earlier. It was like, he really does sound like Will Wheaton. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pretend he's not giving me a nasty look right now. It's random. It's really good <laughs> all right. Uh, next to, uh, <laughs> next to uh, Mr. Hagner, uh, we have uh, the one and only Sean, uh, Dr. Aeon. I think we should actually change his name to body count. <laughs> <laughs> that or that or refrigerator. That <laughs> 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 seems too soon. <laughs> you thought you were gonna get away on skates, didn't you? I never did. <laughs> never did. Okay. Uh, next to Sean, we have another amazing world designer here with us. Uh, the, the guy who's responsible for much of the work that you've seen in the upcoming summer event, uh, Cord Think Tank McCartney. And of course, last but never least, number one in our hearts, Matt Positron Miller. All right, guys. So let's get started. Uh, we went. We. You guys know the. You know the drill by now, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. So uh, for those who are just tuning in on Ustream, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to. We've. Uh, we've narrowed down our selection. We've narrowed down our selection. But we are going to do something a little bit different this time. Um, so we're going to call the individual people up to the mic, uh, and we are going to actually ask them uh, the questions. I think is is a good way to do it because we had some very specific questions for this one. So we're going to actually ask you your questions and uh, put you on the spot and have you answer them, okay? So I hope you remember what you wrote down. <laughs> we didn't tell you there'd be a quiz later, did we? <laughs> Surprise! Pop quiz. Pop quiz. All right, so here we go. Uh, before we get started, though, uh, I want to go over a couple of ground rules. 
for the Make Your Case. You may have noticed there's like a little lawyer theme going on here. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a random image I found on the internet. I don't know what you're talking about. I object. Cover up my head. All righty. So here we go. Um, uh, the rules are uh, we are not going to be able to do any complete zone revamps. We can't consider that in the schedule right now, okay? Um, a maximum of three villain groups with a caveat if you can make a really freaking compelling case, we can do four, okay? Um, six story arcs per zone, and keep the physical alteration of the zone to a minimum, okay? Meaning that we don't want the zone to really lose its original feel uh, and retain aspects of its, uh, of its look. So, uh, these are the questions that we asked you guys. So, for those out in, out in your stream land, the questions that we asked uh, was obviously your name, uh, the zone that you would like to see revamped, uh, should the zone keep its original level range, or should it change to something different? Uh, should the zone have trials or zone events? What is the focal point for the zone? An example that we gave was Moth Cemetery and Dark Astoria. Um, and in three sentences or less, what is the story for the zone? Obviously, every zone kind of has a little bit of a hook, uh, at least one hook, uh, sometimes more. But we're trying to give them a central theme, so we would like for you to explain what you're in your mind, in your in your vision, you see the theme for this zone being. So let's get going, uh, and we're going to bring Fireheart back up to talk about why uh, he believes that King's Row is the zone to revamp. And we're not going to put you on the timer for this one, okay? Uh, but I'm going to I'm going to basically interview you. All right. Okay? So here we go. I feel like I'm on a, an episode of the Newly Weds or something. I think uh, Ustream just had a commercial. Let's go ahead and turn that off there. Okay. So, uh, so Dustin, uh, what zone would you like to see revamped? King's Row. All right. <laughs> King's Row. That's okay. You can say it. That's okay. Um, so, do you believe that it should keep its original level range, or should it change? I think it should keep its original le level range. I do think that uh, the way that the game is designed right now in Freedom, that it almost skips right over King's Row, but I'd like to see that it, you know, see that focus change. Get, let, let's get get the people back into King's Row. Okay, alrighty. And uh, should the zone have trials or zone events? Um, I don't think it needs any trials or zone events beyond the uh, beyond the two, the build the uh, hunt for the you know, stop powder from being rebuilt. And uh, I, but I do think we should have a uh, not so much an event, but just uh, get the higher people to come in there and give them a reason to come in and hunt the paladins once they've been built. Okay. So, uh, what do you believe is the focal point for the zone? Um, the focal point is still the raised area, the, the hospital, the uh, Freedom, uh, Freedom Corps building, and the and uh, Wentworths. But uh, I don't think it really has a focal point beyond that, except well, it's just like a dark and dirty mess. <laughs> okay. And then, uh, in three sentences or less, can you tell us what the story for the zone is? Okay, basically, King Row has two main stories. Basically, the uh, the lost are introduced to us at this point, and we're trying to figure out what they what they're all about. Uh, clock, what clockworks go come into their own here and. Uh, become a real menace, and I guess the other one is this is the first time we used to be uh, introduced to the skulls. So I guess my real thing is not that uh, it needs a new story, I think the stories that exist need to be clarified. Okay, outstanding. All right, panelists, do you have any questions for Fireheart about his idea for a King's Row revamp? I like it. <laughs> I mean, basically, I'm not saying it's we've remap, we've revamped uh, the hollows. We've uh, put a whole new set of uh, 
um, of enemies into Paris Park, um, and we completely rebuilt uh, Galaxy City and Atlas Park. So, King Pro seems like the next one on the. On the topic of level, uh, do you feel, just getting back, I know that you said that you'd like to keep the level range the same, however, um, that, that level range is, is particularly low. Would you well, prefer to keep it the same, or would you prefer it to have a natural flow out of Alice Park? Ooh. Um, I think it needs to fit in. I mean, I think we need a reason to go up to King's Row. Um, it used to be, basically, level five, hit King's Row. Uh, now we're up to level seven or eight before we even finish with the, uh, you know, with saving Atlas Park. So perhaps um, more the level should be shifted upwards, or at least the top level, the, the top limit should be raised a little bit. Any more questions, panelists? Actually, I have one more. Okay. Um, so I know that one of the, the main uh, uh, inspirations for uh, King's Row is uh, Gotham City. And I know this yeah. is actually a question that has come up um, among us when we've, when we've discussed uh, possible changes to King's Row. Um, and one of the ideas that we've floated is the possibility that it turns into an entirely night zone. Uh, what do you think about that? I don't know that it needs to go to a night zone, but I do think that um, this would be one of those, op those opportunities to really show the contrast between the shiny Around you know around the, the central park where the cops are keeping everything nice and clean and the dirty where all those poor people live, uh, basically the leftover semi-industrial area there that's uh, being torn down by the clockworks and inhabited by everybody else. Um, I think it'd be interesting to borrow some stuff from the. Uh, from the safeguards and uh, such, and give us destructible junk scattered through the alleys there. Okay. Um, so uh, the current Paladin event is stopping the Paladin from being built. Is that seems sort of counterintuitive to how players want to play? <laughs> it does. Um, I I think stopping Paladin from being built is a worthwhile goal, but once he's there. Uh, it takes more than just a couple of logies to take him down. It, it really does call for a higher level team to come in and hunt down the walkers because otherwise you end up with three of them and then it's all practically impossible to stop them. Uh, okay. Well, guys, please, guys, miss, miss, I'm sorry, please hold your comments. We, we really uh, we want to give everybody a chance to make their case, guys. I, we definitely would love to talk to you guys outside of this, though, okay? So the uh, what was I going to say? So the clockwork story arc, I, I believe, is touched on more in depth by the Synapse Task Force. Uh, do you really feel that the clockwork are one of the main focuses for King's Row, or is it just because Paladin is there and the clockwork kind of shows? Basically, it's because Paladin is there that the clockwork really come into uh, possession of King's Row. They, I, I agree that that they could almost be skipped, except for. The there. All right, great. Thank you very much. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. All right, so that was for King's Row. Next up is El Dorado. Give a round of applause. Oh, I see. It's El Dorado. I get it now. <laughs> I, what you did there, I see it. Okay, so El Dorado, uh, what what zone would you like to see revamped? I'd like to see Boomtown revamped, but based on your ground rules, technically the story that I had in mind could go anywhere, so it doesn't have to be completely rebuilt. Okay. Uh, well, let's let's keep exploring this. Um, should it keep its original level range, or should it be a little higher, it or just should it change? Would probably have to go a little higher. Okay. Uh, do you believe it should have trials or zone events? Uh, yes. Um, the story I had in my head would have spawns of bigger critters like uh, like Paladin. Only one would be a giant Jaeger, and the other one would be a cross between, say, Paladin and a Zeus Titan. Okay. Uh, what do you believe is the focal point uh, for the zone? The Clockwork Fortress. The Clockwork Fortress. Okay, uh, could you describe the Clockwork Fortress a little bit? Well, it kind of goes in with the 
the next question, is that okay? In the three sentences or less? You know what, that sounds great. Go for it. Okay. Um, basically, the idea that came to me was that a Praetorian clockwork that got left behind after the invasion, invasion sees a bunch of his oppressed brethren in primal earth and decides to create a robot sanctuary for them. So he grabs groups of Jaegers, groups of Zeus Titans, groups of uh, regular clockworks from King's Row or wherever, um, and pulls them all together. He styles himself king. He would look like um, the vision I had was the legs and arms of a fake nemesis in gunmetal with silver, and the torso and head of a Praetorian clockwork. He was gonna call himself Henry the Ninth, but his friends call him Hal. <laughs> and um, he, the objective of the zone would be to get him out of whatever zone it is before he takes his robot army and moves out. Um, the, the delusion of Brander would be that one half would be all in brass where you could see the gears working in the buildings. It would be pristine, it would be inhabited by the acres and more steampunky type mechs. The other side would be all in silver and would be more of the Zeus Titans, the, the Praetorian clockwork, the regular clockwork. Um, you know, they wouldn't be Praetorian anymore, but sort of a hybrid between the two. And then with the fortress in the middle being a hybrid of, of all sorts of robot gear parts where he would hang out. And the whole point would be to get him out. And to do that, you might actually have to go, say, ally with Babbage or uh, move Ocelot 601 or you know, one of the guys you got rid of before to get him out before he takes over the city. Okay, thank you. Uh, panelists, do you have any questions uh, for El Dorado? Yeah. So the, uh, the amount of zone uh, revamp for that, the structures, like how would you have that work without being able to replace all the buildings? Without being able to replace all the buildings, you could replace parts, like if I remember correctly in Boomtown, I'm sorry, I haven't been in there for a while, there were like a couple of uh, buildings that were kind of trashed. You could put the clockwork forest in the clockwork fortress in the middle, and you could explain that out by something you mentioned at the last comment, which was the rogue nemesis building builders. That they could have just he could have subverted those and had them build the fortress really quickly, and then you know leave out all the fancy bits on the edge and do that later. So kind of using the the husks of skyscrapers as a, a matrix to build with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What um, you mentioned, uh, like uh, clockwork and uh, Praetorian clockwork and Zeus Titans and all that stuff. Um, what level range were you imagining? Since a lot of those don't really mesh at the same levels. Well, I was thinking if they're hybrids between the different types of robots, and if the story idea to have to actually ally with Babbage or the Clockwork King, you'd have to be a little higher to go into the Zig to get them out, or at least talk to them. So maybe. 20, 30-ish. So were you thinking that, uh, that the uh, the enemies in the zone would be a mishmash of all the various parts of robots? Um, I kind of like, I really do like the Jaegers. They're the coolest robots in the game. I don't know if he likes other ones, but I like the saw blades and the maces and all that. Bit. So I wanted to create a little special spot just for them without their nemesis buddies. Um, so that they could have a little spot and then have a mishmash, the mishmash be of the more modern robots, because you can't really mix steam robots with modern technology. So those would be the clockwork mixing with the uh, Zeus Titans and the Praetorian bits. Okay. okay. All right, thank you very much. Did you in a steampunk outfit I thought you were last time? Did you wear a steampunk outfit last time? Yes, you did. So I'm not surprised to hear this proposal, and I actually like it a lot, so thanks. Alrighty, here we go. Alright. So, Red Ice, please come up to the... Uh, to the... Give a round of applause. All right, here we go. So, Red Ice. Yes. What zone would you like to see revamped? Independence Port. Okay. Go ahead and you can angle, 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 uh, angle that down. Okay. <laughs> here we go. All right. Independence Port. And do you believe that Independence Port should keep its original level range or should it change? Just keep the original level range. I okay. Think. All right. 
And uh, should it have trials or zone events? Um, outside from Blue Sky, no. But uh, I would like to see like maybe a new task force. I know Penelope is going to be in there. But maybe in the future we could see a task force about the two, since we see, do see that a lot over there. OK. The soup. The soup. Or maybe even the family. All righty. I'm sorry, maybe in the family? The family. OK, right on. Uh, so what do you believe should be the focal point for the zone? Um, I, as far as I know, uh, I could be wrong, <coughs> Independence Port is um, pretty much where all, it's, it's a port. So um, what I was thinking was uh, some sort of, uh, like I said, as I suggested the task force before, maybe there could be some sort of illegal trading going on. Um, as via the family, um, I know there's a lot of. Um, I know they even in just an outside conversation, um, like when you pass by them, they talk a lot about, you know, getting, you know, uh, getting X item or or whatever it is that uh, that they're that they're trying to smuggle in. Um, and then we also have Luska, uh, who's there randomly. Um, Okay, that's fine. That's all right. Um, so, uh, what do you believe is the story for the zone? Um, like I said, I think one of the biggest things that uh, uh, that people notice once they go to the once they go to uh, Independence Port is Luska. Um, I I I haven't played much of of uh, of the zone to be honest. With you. I think. If we can get some sort of uh, story arc about why Lucy's there in the first place, um, would be I think that would be cool, or maybe even some sort of a task force. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So panelists. <laughs> Like maybe Fusca lost like her favorite anchor for each of her temples. We have to recover them all. Something like that. Something like that. So uh, we've had a uh, few okay, guys. Uh, how we have been putting out a lot of 21 to 30 zones, and uh, so if we said you know choose another level range, level range for independent sport, uh, what would you choose? 25, I guess. Between 25 to 30, somewhere. So that so that anyone who can enter the zone can actually you know do the TF. So what are your thoughts on, uh, say, like, the family versus the Sioux over control of the board? Oh, that was great. I, okay. I think that would be something that something good to focus on, too. So. Guys, this head might explode, but uh, what do you think about uh, reducing the size of the zone, like, walling off? That, that might be a good idea, but if, <laughs> if not, though, maybe we could have some sort of... System, like what they did with the, uh, yeah, like, you know, either, I don't know how feasible it would be to add a train station up on the north side, or, or the southern side, or whatever, but I think maybe some sort of ferry system within the zone might work, uh, so we can, you know, get around easier and faster, especially when we're doing, uh, what task force is it, is it Citadel? It, yeah, it is possible to, to put more travel options as well. It's possible to create a more logical flow of the zone that has you moving uh, perhaps in a clockwise uh, fashion around yeah. the zone as opposed to uh, every single thing will send you uh, exactly opposite <laughs> <Yes>. across. <laughs> no easy way to make that other than just to swim or hit the RP. Wow, Cord, it sounds like you actually played this recently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get around. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> Any more questions, panelists? So I think the uh, the Devouring Earth show up, I think, at the lowest level here yeah. around Terra Volta. Yeah, they yeah. 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 Do you have any thoughts on how that might tie into the story arc, maybe with your idea about Luska? <laughs> it might be a good idea, too. I mean, I, I don't think Luska's part of Devouring Earth, but maybe there's a secret we don't know about. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay. Oh, hold on, guys.
guys, let's, let's, let's give everybody their, their chance to, to make their case here. Do we have any more questions, panelists? No? Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Round of applause. So how many of you guys think this is uh, this is a little more difficult than you thought it would be? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, do you want us to do the hard questions next? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, putting you on the spot, Mrs. Wentworth. Make your case. This is, yeah, you're, you are stepping into the shoes of the designer right now. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Sultry Siren. Yes. Mrs. Wentworth. Slash. What zone do you believe we should revamp? Perez Park. All right, Perez Park. Um, do you believe it should keep its original level range, or should that change? Original level, level range is all right. Okay. Should it have trials or zone events? Yes. Right now, of course, the zone event is the Kraken, but... Yeah, has no purpose. <laughs> um, and here I thought the zone event was the forest. Uh, <laughs> find your way to the mission. You just have to follow the lanterns. <laughs> um, what do you believe should be the focal point for the zone? Um, I think that there needs to be something more with the Gaiman Amphitheater. Okay. Yeah. 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 And finally, uh, tell us your story for the zone. I was thinking you could probably come up with some sort of a task force that involved the Guy Man Amphitheater. Maybe something along the lines of the star of the latest Paragon City Players uh, event has gone missing. Maybe she's a Skull girlfriend and, you know, the Skulls and the, um, completely forgot the other bad guy. Oh, yeah. Hellions are fighting about it, but it's probably not them at all. It's the COT. And perhaps you can tie the Kraken in there and actually give him a reason to be there. Because... It's a really cool set, but it's just all in the lake, and that's it. It's a nice lake, though. It's beautiful, right? <laughs> but it would, it would be more fun to actually have a reason for why he's there and defeat him. Okay. Just fishing. Just fishing? Yeah. Yeah. Minding his own business. All right, panelists, do you have questions for Mrs. Wentworth? Do the Hellions burn down all the trees in the park? Please. Ooh, that would be interesting. But only after you make them look a whole lot prettier. <laughs> Uh, so you mentioned a task force. Do you see any uh, story arcs being in here? Um, well, we'd have to probably come up with something new. Um, I'm not sure what to tie it into. And it's kind of I'm a little light on lore lately, so I can't really help you there. Sorry. So the the current big story that I think players first get introduced to for Perez Park is that Skulls own one half outside of the park, and the Hellions own the other, and there's like constant gang wars on the street. Mm -hmm. um, do you see that tying in more other than in the task force, or like would the COT have a higher presence? I, I think it would be it would be more interesting to explore that skull hellion thing rather than just the the little skirmishes, because frankly, there's not a whole lot of people that go to Perez Park lately. There's really kind of no reason to go there unless you need a badge, um, and it would be nice to to do something with them other than just go get the Bone Daddy badge. Um, so. Give me more stuff there. It's a it's a really great zone. It's a good size. You can get lots of places from it, but there's very little content there that ties in. Into the so because <laughs> it's a hazard zone, it is. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a hazard zone, the spawns are larger in there. Um, mm -hmm. I think players might out level it too quickly, just moving between the missions. Mm -hmm. um, if you had to shift the level range to accommodate that, what would you shift it to? I don't recall what it is right now, but. Um, is it five to eight? Yeah. So probably like five to fifteen, maybe five to twelve, something like that. So one of the things I wanted to do with this is actually put holes in the wall around the park so that you can get in from yes. more than just the two sides. I Does that fit in with your plan any way? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> destruction is good. Moderate destruction. More questions, guys? Uh, not questions so much as just comments. Um, I, I definitely think that uh, Pres Park, for, for where it sits, is maybe perhaps a little too large. Um, I think that if we uh, touch on it again, we'll probably want to try and find ways to shrink it down a little bit. Um, I'm a little skeptical just about the level range. Um, similarly to uh, what came up with Independence Port, uh, we have 
a lot of things at that at that level. I think um, you know, we've got Atlas Park, uh, Kings Row. Uh, you know, going to the hollows very much around. You know, those levels fly by very fast. Um, and I know it, um, John uh, just basically asked a question. I'm pretty much about to restate. If you had to move it dramatically, like not to expand the level, but in order to actually move it into pretty much a different you know range of content, what would be your preference for that? I'd probably have to say somewhere between like 22 and 30, somewhere in there, because that is kind of a grindy stage, I feel, and to give something new to do in that range would be actually really great. Um, and perhaps something you could look at is doing, you know, it, it's, it is kind of a zone within a zone. You've got the center park and then you have the outside streets. So maybe you make the outside streets a little bit smaller so people can still go there, but make the content that's inside the, the, the park walls itself a lot harder. Because, I mean, frankly, you got to have a team to take down that crack, and that thing is hard, so. Yeah, I definitely think it's important to make sure that uh, for, especially for a zone like Perez Park, I mean, I remember uh, leveling my went to little defender in there ages and ages ago. It's, whatever we do with it, it has to have, it has to have a solid home that it mm -hmm. lives in. It has to have a purpose, um, and that it doesn't have to fight with a whole bunch of other recently revamped stuff um, right. in order for it to shine in the player's eyes. Yeah, another thing is, is that uh, we adjusted the experience flow, I think, right before going rogue, so that it was a little bit faster at lower, uh, I think, across the board, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of the lower level zones, you, um, you end up nice. out leveling more. There's so much overlap that you miss out on some of the low level zones, and then you don't have enough high or higher level zones, which is right. why we're asking if you had to shift it dramatically. Like, higher is good. Yeah. That's yeah. fine. 50 plus. <laughs> yeah, 50 <laughs> plus. Yes. <laughs> With the TPN rocks. Okay, guys. <laughs> gentlemen, any more questions? Ladies and gentlemen? So, uh, 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 when you talk about uh, the amphitheater, uh, uh, Addison, did you have any questions about like uh, what kind of, how to make that, that uh, focal point of the zone? Because right now it's not a huge standout part of the zone. Yeah, I was going to say. Um, I've taken a look at the zone, and I know that area is uh, a little bit smaller. I mean, mm -hmm. how would you go over her? How do you think you like to see that expand upon? Oh, I, th I think probably just it kind of revamping the area around it just a little bit. I mean, it is it, it is an older zone, so it can stand to have a little bit of a, a spruce up, you know, let's all have a park thingy kind of a thing. But um, maybe making the amphitheater a little bit bigger, making the, the, the concentric, concentric rings where people would sit a little bit you know, more stately, um, because it, it, if you look at the, the stuff on the like, I'm not sure what time it is. Um, but it, it, it talks about, you know, people used to go there a lot with their families to do a lot of things, so it would have been a, a really great place to go, and maybe it's a little run down now, but you can kind of back it all the way up before you make it run down slightly. Right now it's kind of blase. All right, outstanding. Let's go ahead and we're going to move on to the next one. Thank you very much. Uh, Eric Nelson, where are you at? All right, let's give Eric Nelson a round of applause. This is one that a lot of people have been waiting to hear about. And I think some people on the panel are dreading to talk about it, but that's okay. Is it Port Oaks? No, it's not Port Oaks. <laughs> Uh, so Eric Nelson, what zone do you feel like we should revamp? The Shadow Shard. This time he was over. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Should it keep its original level range or should it change? I think it should keep it with a caveat that we can get to a little later. But in general, keep it. Three out of the four zones right now are 40 plus. Let's okay. keep that. Okay. Um, should it have trials or zone events? Um, I think uh, zone events uh, um, uh, are. Uh, I think it. I, yeah, I think there should be a zone event probably surrounding the uh, um, the aspects of Ruluru, and uh, they could be something like a giant monster type of thing. Uh, but uh, again, I can touch on that a little more in the last section. Okay. Um, what do you believe would be uh, the focal point for this zone? Uh, I think probably uh, the Storm Palace is the, uh, it, it's really a group of four zones right now, obviously, referred to as, you know, in greater, in greater description as the Shadow Shard. 
So I'm thinking the Storm Palace would be uh, uh, probably the focal point, the end place where you're trying to get uh, you know, the flow from Firebase Zulu on through. Alrighty, and go ahead and let's talk about your story for the Shadow Shard. I think uh, in light of the recent events in Dark Storia and the uh, revelation of who the letter writer is and his particular backstory and uh, involvement with uh, Rularu and the imprisonment of Rularu in the Shadow Shard dimension, I think that uh, a really compelling story with some nice new story arcs and then some, some zone events perhaps with aspects of Rularu in the different zones um, could, be, uh, uh, could be addressed with the, uh, uh, with the revamp of all the Shadow Shard zones. I think you might even want to consider eliminating some of those. I mean, individually, each of them are humongous, and that's great, there's nothing wrong with that, but I think it, uh, it just is very daunting for people, uh, even when you add in the jetpack uh, vendors that seem like kind of a band-aid slapped on there, um, you know, give some, some ways to get around and maybe make it only two zones. Maybe it's Firebase Zulu and Storm Palace with some amalgam of the two that you would lose in between, or maybe you lose only one, something of that nature. I think you have to make it co-op, give the villains a chance, like Dark Astoria, kind of what's been established with Dark Astoria, let the villains in somehow, and then, and then they can both, you know, um, uh, cooperate uh, or antagonize, depending on the way the story goes, with uh, heroes in continuing to keep Ruluru there, or however the story arc goes. Okay, outstanding. Pam? Uh, so one of my questions would be, uh, one of the issues that we have with the Shadow Shard is that, you know, where do missions take place, right? Because right now you can be in a cave or an island, and for six story arcs that can get pretty boring pretty fast. Uh, so what would be some of your suggestions uh, in order to have some more map diversity? Well, I think one of the, that's a good point, but one of the problems that, you know, maybe it was an attempt to address that kind of question, is that if you do the task forces that are associated with, with that area, every once in a while you're thrown in, hey, go back to Founders, or go over to Steel or Talos or something like that, and everybody groans. Oh, jeez. Okay, everybody, you know. It's not as bad now as it used to be with the oral portals and things like that, but I'd like to see anything kept pretty much in that zone. I mean, if you're trying to make those that zone or those group of zones shine, you want to really show that off. Um, it, it can get it can get boring, but uh, you know, I don't know. I, I don't really know what to do about that. I mean, you, I think you don't want to have. Again, it might have been an, an, an attempt to address that. I don't think you want to have all the hunts either, and say, well, we don't want to go in a cave, or we don't want to. You know, go in here. So now we're going to have a bunch of hunts outside. That gets really, really boring very fast as well. I think I don't think people are really entranced by that. I think you can tell a story more compellingly by going inside the door mission and continuing on with the interaction. So I think if the writing is good enough, I don't think that it, it really. I don't think people will mind that it's that you've gone in a cave twice in a row, three times in a row, or something like that. So um, as you brought up, you mentioned. Uh, uh, something that most people are aware of, and the fact that uh, Shadow Shard is four distinct zones. Um, so one of the daunting things when discussing Shadow Shard um, is kind of uh, something of almost like a, a showstopper on it, is um, the need to revamp all four zones um, simultaneously. Uh, what do you, and actually this is more of a, a broad general question perhaps for the audience, um, as far as um, the, the ability, to, the, our ability to do four zone revamps uh, sufficiently all at once and get them all out all at once is a little unrealistic. Um, do you so feel before, really quickly to interrupt you? I yeah. apologize. I do want to point out that he did suggest actually downsizing downsizing writing zones. zones. And that's, that's how I would address that is by going from four to six zones down to three or two. I wouldn't go below two. I think it has a. I think going down to one really robs it of a lot of its, it does have some charm. I mean, it, it, it's got definitely some, some problems with the size and such, but the look is very unique and there's a lot of neat stuff in there. So yeah, I think downsizing would address a lot of that. I mean, you can just cut them entirely and you know, then adjust your schedule and your revamp. Even, even three is a little bit much um, yeah, to get into the schedule. Two. So I guess my question then is uh, if we had to do them stretched out over a couple different issues, is that something that is, Satisfactory considering the fact that a uh, portion of the shard will not be up to date with uh, the revamp of. Uh, if we had to do them spread across three different issues, is that satisfactory uh, from a 
just a player experience standpoint. Yeah, I think so. I don't think it's a showstopper. I think that you know the ultimate goal, the ultimate goal is to improve the area and to make it a more compelling area with a more compelling story. And, and, and just like all of these revamps, we're talking about more reason to go there. And that's you know we're obviously talking about zones, any of them, whether it's Kings Row, Perez Park, or what have you, that we want to give reason to go into. If that takes two issues or extra time, I think that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. And I think that you could unfold the story arc in such a way as to support that if you want. I think uh, another approach could be to, you've mentioned the size of, of Shadow Shard. Anyone who's been there, they know the size very well. Um, you could, uh, another, another option would be to just focus on kind of flavor pockets of the area, not then cut out a bunch of the stuff. Leave it there so you can see it, but you know, almost like blue wall it off maybe. And then that way you don't have to worry about jetpacks um, and revamping it all could be right. done and potentially want to go. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, that um, uh, it, it, there's really no need to necessarily assume as part of the revamp that you're going to uh, have to modify the, the zone itself or the environment all that much. I mean, you certainly could wall it off, and if that's quick and easy for you guys, I don't know. But um, but uh, I don't think you need to assume that as a, as a consequence of revamping these, that it will necessarily have, you'll have to change the shape, change the size, add stuff, take stuff away, do anything that's necessarily time consuming. I think it could be quick hit stuff like that. Yeah. There's always the possibility of anything that we remove, uh, as far as the boundaries are concerned, can make their way into perhaps islands. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, that'd be an odd question, but uh, what do you view as a uh, nemesis role uh, in this? Since there is that one uh, Ricky War Zone mission that I, I personally like a lot, where you go to the Shadow Shard and you're like, oh my god, there's a nemesis base here. <laughs> and uh, so, like, what would you, if one of the requirements was, you know, for the three villain groups, like, Nemesis had to be a part of that, uh, I think so. what, what would you, what would your suggestion be uh, for that, story-wise? Well, I think, he, he, I think he almost has to be, given, given the background and given his grandiose plans, uh, you know, for that, uh, uh, for the area, for the power that Ruler represents. Um, so I definitely think he would be one of the, say, three groups that you would have in there. And, and he definitely ties into the story of, of uh, Rularoo and Dream Doctor, and, and now with the little tease that went up on the website yesterday, I think that can play into it as well with, uh, you know, take advantage of Statesman's absence now. So what do you see the, uh, the villains role being? Do you see them having their own contacts and their own contact chain and their own story arc chains, or do you see them multi-purposing off the same hero contacts only you think you maybe some flavor text change? I think you could go either way depending on your time constraints, and I think you could build that into depending on how the art assets have to be manipulated and stuff like that. If there's potential time, I think that uh, having separate chains would be great. I think it's, it's nice love to show for the red side players, and it also represents that they would come into this with a different slant, a different idea of how to um, how to use this to their advantage. But you could fall back to something that's more neutral, I think, that both sides could use if it was a time crunch or something like that. Or well, I mean, we are still restricted to six story arcs, so if you split them in, it would be three each. It would be three each, so, right, exactly. Yeah. Which, of those, that. which of those would you prefer, three each or six co-op? Uh, <laughs> That's his cup. Well, yeah. So, yeah. six each. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that, uh, some of the feedback we usually get is whenever the villains and the heroes team up, the villains always feel like they get the short end of the stick. You know, they're always doing doing good so that they can do villainy later and, you know, that sort of thing. And, and I think, especially with the Shadow Shark being a, you know, such a powerful place, that the villains can really get away with some, you know, red-handed murder here and, and really gnaw mm -hmm. themselves up. Well, what if the Earth needed something from the Shadow Shard, but it would hurt the Shadow Shard residents? But, you know, Primal Earth needs it, so the heroes have to put their holier-than-thou aside and just go and steal it. So the heroes have get the short end of the stick. How do the heroes feel about that? <laughs> yeah, you, know, yeah. Yeah. But you, you only have to kill a hundred people, but you'll save a hundred million. Is that cool, okay, heroes? Yeah, totally. yeah. <laughs> to be another way. I, I think in this scenario, one of the possible ideas would be to do something similar to what we do with Dark Historia, where you have the six story arcs, but there are options along the way to choose the heroic route, choose the villainous route. Um, because one of the benefits of doing six story arcs is that you can do a much longer, you know, more epic story, whereas three story arcs, you have to, you know, wrap it up pretty fast, like, in the middle end, like, it's not a, 
it's not a dull dollar. Right. Yeah, do six and branch it as yeah. much as you can with the with the slant, you know, to fill in so that they don't feel slighted. So they don't feel that, oh yeah, I'm going into another RWC and you know, putting my felony aside for the greater good. Gosh. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, guys. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the panelists off right now on this one. So we need to. We have two more that we need to get through. So, alrighty. Thank you very much. Give a round of applause. Dr. Anui. 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 Is that how it Okay. Anui. <laughs> Alrighty. Go ahead and uh, yeah, step up close to the mic. We've got to make sure we can all hear you. Oh, okay. You're in at home. So, alright, Dr. Anui. <laughs> feels like it should be said like that. What zone would you like to see revamped? Striga. Striga Isle, all right. Go ahead, don't, go ahead and speak directly into the mic. You got, okay, cool. Alrighty, uh, do you believe it should keep its original level range or should it change? Um, it should probably go up a little bit in, in some parts of it. Okay. Close, closer to the mic, please. Sorry, higher cap. There you go, higher cap, all right, thank you. Um, should it have trials or zone events? Um, probably both. Okay. Uh, what do you believe should be the focal point for this zone? The volcano and the uh, council base. Okay. Uh, you specifically called out giant mech men here? Oh, yes. Okay. I, I want a giant mech men to come out of the volcano. Uh, <laughs> How giant? <laughs> as big as it is in the, uh, in the town center? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> In three sentences or less, what's the story for Striga Island? I'll... Well, with the fifth column coming back, it could be they're moving back in and they want their giant robots back. <laughs> what else do you need? Yeah, exactly. Fifth column and giant robots. The uh, end. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, from an art standpoint, uh, Addison, do you have any concerns about uh, giant robots coming out of volcanoes? <laughs> Uh, the effects team would, would think about that kind of stuff, though, or animation. Or programming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gentlemen, ladies, questions? Uh, so I guess one of my questions would be, you know, since this seems like it's a setup of, like, fifth column, first council, like, fascist versus fascist since the fifth column, the Nazis. Um, I, well, I know you keep saying that, but, um, <laughs> but, you know, uh, but one, one of the issues is, uh, I think might be that, you know, they look very similar. So, if you had to either put a third villain group there or suggest um, how to make the groups look different so that there's different silhouettes and things like that, like, what would you suggest? Well, you also have the warriors there. Or they could be, yeah, <laughs> they could all be trying to make sure that they survive or take advantage of weaknesses in one or the other faction. Yes. <laughs> We're having private conversations here. <laughs> So Cord Carney suggested the old the old tabletop um, I think it was Milton Bradley game, uh, Fireball Island. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a fantastic idea. Like instead of fireballs, we have flaming robots coming out. Original uh, end boss for Drowning in Blood was actually supposed to be a gigantic sheep that came out of the bay and they told me no. Yeah, the giant robot thing really concerns me. Can you come up with a different ending or cool event? I'm open to anything really. So what's the uh, what's the tone of the zone? Is it uh, the fifth column of already won, or there's a conflict going on, or the fifth column are just arriving? Um, well, with it kind of being earlier in the zones, it could be a beginning for making a more uh, publicly known uh, foothold. 
So if you had to, let's say we're doing a three-part act, and uh, Striga I-1 fits in there somewhere. Uh, say we had to do three zones where the fifth column council war is kind of featured. Where would you see, what zones would you see that happening in, and where would Striga fit in that? Well, you have you have it sort of in Independence Board and um, Founders Fall, so it would kind of be in the middle, I would think. Cool. They're conversing. Volcanoes and giant robots like totally went with me, so. <laughs> Now, would both sides get giant robots? Because, like, you could totally go Godzilla with this. Yeah. <laughs> well, you need a giant warrior. Yeah, I was going to say, giant robots bad, giant lizards good. Oh, we could take the, we could take the Colossus from uh, Jason and the Argonauts, and that could, like, fight for the warriors. <laughs> I was actually thinking, um... Oh, you guys? So, so I was actually thinking, uh, what if we made this a villain zone? What if uh, the infighting between fifth column and council is something the heroes didn't even want to get involved with, but the villains wanted to take advantage of? Oh. And it's another island. And it's another island. The annex. All your islands are belong to us. <laughs> Outstanding. Any more questions for uh, any more questions for Dr. Alwi? True. Nope. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We really gotta get through this. Alright, so the last one, and then we're going to, uh, we're going to look at that and talk about it. One more, so a round of applause for Dr. Ali. Thank you. Alright guys, uh, the final one uh, is going to be from Alien Mafia from Justice. Come on down. One dollar. <laughs> one down, one dollar. Oh, oh, you're bidding. I see. I got you, folks. I see what you did there. All righty. Alien Mafia. 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 It's been a long day, guys. It's not over yet. It's not over yet? Um, all right, guys. So, Alien Mafia from Justice. Uh, what zone would you like to see revamped? Uh, Eden and the Hive as one co-op zone. Okay. Do you believe it should keep its original level range? It should keep its, its own level range, but as like, separate the second half to where it's part incarnate with the Devouring Earth, because we have that underground uh, travel going on. Okay. With the Hamu, of course, at the very end of the map. Okay. Uh, do you believe it should have trials or zone events? Uh, just um, possibly move Jurassic over there because he is Devouring Earth, and then yeah, they can be right uh, along with the, the Woodsman's uh, uh, trial. Okay. And what's the focal point for the zone? Um, just the, the, the mystic kind of uh, environment that it, would, it could be, like the, uh, huge trees or like a a heavenly kind of feel to it because it is Eden. Eden is kind of uh, based on the, the, the religious side of it, so it, it would look really cool. <laughs> okay. And uh, what do you feel like should, uh, the story for this zone you're describing is? Well, it's uh, being that it's a co-op zone, the Garden Earth being a global threat, you play again, heroes and villains, uh, three story arcs each or six total. And, um, Facing against the devouring earth, and then you also have the nemesis and, and the uh, Cray, who are also trying to fight for that zone as well. All right, outstanding, gentlemen. So, what's the fate of the abyss if you're going to give the villains access to Hammy Raid there? Well, I was just trying to centralize the Hammy Raid. Um, having Hammy Raid spawn, the Hammy Hammonds spawn in two different zones on two different sides. I, I figure you centralize it so that everybody, whether you're red or, or hero. So you just want to get rid of the abyss, or...? Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, how would you imagine uh, going to uh, team? <laughs> 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 
sort of something like a fault line is, where you have that divide that's like, here's the trial area, stay out of this, you know, the team. Yeah, I was going to say that. You can have like a, a separation of like a, a big um, divide earth kind of wall that they've created before they hand you down, like a fortress or something, um, using the plant life. Or you can have like the, what uh, Atlas Park has, where it has the outside instances. Or if you get near it, it you can have spawn those, those giant monsters you gotta kill for the, the essence of Earth. So how do you see the uh, the event we held a few months back where uh, Colonel DeRay kind of accidentally sent some seeds of Hamadon over and things got kind of dicey there for a little bit. Do you see that playing any part in this with the Praetorian Hamadon kind of genetic material getting over there? Um, Again, based off of the storyline that you guys have put in, yeah, we could have a Praetorian invasion as well, fighting against the other Hamida, the Primordial Hamida. So, you see, uh, do you want to think, do anything with the remnants of the Fertile Core uh, labs in there? Um, move it, yeah, keep them there, but towards the, the front of it. Okay. So it's part of the 40 to 50 zone. And the back side is just 50 plus for the inference as well. Okay. Okay, guys. So uh, let's take one more question from the panel. <laughs> what, uh, what do you imagine Cray is up to in there with uh, the new story artist? I was just trying try and take advantage of the the the, the, the Earth constraints. That's that. Maybe uh, looking to the rogue isles to hire some uh, hire some unscrupulous individuals to help them uh, achieve their ends. Okay. Outstanding. Thank you very much. Just a second, folks. Talk amongst yourselves.
because believe it or not, we also have plans of our own and story of our own and stuff like that. Uh, but. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna quote the movie. <laughs> the customer is always right. Yes, you are. Until the computer is supposed to be here today. I'm not even supposed to be. The customer is a lovely person. All right. So uh, what we're actually gonna do is this. Um, we're gonna actually talk about uh, one of the zone revamps that we felt was particularly intriguing, and that's not to say these other ideas didn't have merit, because we wouldn't have picked them to ask you the questions if we didn't think they had merit. Um, but we wanted to drill down on one of the one particular zone to talk about, and some aspects of it. And uh, why don't you guys uh, go ahead, and as you hear us talking about it, line up if you have questions. We got like 10 minutes though, so we gotta be fast. But the devs are gonna start talking about it, and if you have a particular question, we'll cut to you if we have a question, okay? So the zone, uh, Positron, you wanna go ahead and uh, tell everybody what zone we're gonna talk about? Yeah, tell yeah. us about it. Uh, that would be street, oh, sorry, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> throwing a curveball again. Independence Port. So should I ask you guys the same questions? Yeah. <laughs> that works all we do at work all day. <laughs> I can't do it. Uh, speak into the mic, please. Speak into the mic. This is the mic. There are many of us like it, this one is fine. All right. Uh, so, uh, Sean McCann, in three sentences or less, what story do you want for the zone? For independent sport? Well, uh, I would probably say, going off of what we talked about, you have the family versus the zoo, but I think uh, Tyne and Luska, Luska, uh, the octopus, uh, you uh, could do something with Cray, because I believe there was some lore that it was somehow involved with Cray. So you basically have family versus Sue, but with Cray kind of in the background, uh, doing their own kind of thing that eventually threatens the whole zone. I like when you guys talk about like old lore, you always look at me like I would know. <laughs> I'll, I'll make something up. That's, that's easy. And then I'm wrong, and you guys call me out. It's <laughs> the joy of it. Okay, well, we got one question about an independent okay. sport already. Okay. Um, one of the things I wanted to kind of throw out as an idea it's not a revamp of the group, but it's a play no one that's there. You have the Council of Fifth Column for selecting it out. I like the idea for of adding an event that 70 years after the Fifth Column invaded Independence Sport and Atlas died defending the Ballard Bridge, that they figure. They're going to come back and make another shot at it, since they've had 70 years to develop and to make the event that the heroes have to defend the Valor Bridge, and they don't have Atlas. It's now them doing it. So then, so, so part of the event is going around trying to figure out how to resurrect Atlas. Most of them. This is what I do all day. I just, I, he, he does that and says that's what she said. And that's, uh, I've never said that ever. <laughs> that's what she said. Um, yeah, I, I think it's an interesting idea. Uh, I don't know. Uh, like, so I, I, I think you know tying in the historical aspect of that. Um, I don't honestly. I think a majority of our players probably haven't read deep enough into the lore to know about that. I think it would be a wonderful opportunity to teach them about it. Give you another excuse to go click on the plaque underneath Atlas and uh, read all about it, but um, I think it it definitely brings a head to the Council Fifth Column War, um, especially if one of the groups attacks the other while they're trying to undertake it, or um, somehow sabotages them, or maybe even keys the player into that event about to happen and sort of undermines the uh, the uh, the efforts of, of their rival. Totally. I think it'd be an awesome idea that you have Burkholder yet again try and shaft over the other side, like whatever side he's on now. I mean, you know, maybe they, maybe they're the ones with the giant this time with the giant Mechman. <laughs> giant Mechman. Underwater base. So, uh, speaking about the original proposal, um, like, what, what do you guys uh, see as being kind of a catalyst for the the the, the Sioux versus family turf war? Uh, honestly, the Sioux family turf war has been going on for a long time. The Sioux control the rival drug in Paragon City, which is Rage, um, and the 
family is at the center of this paradigm ring. So they've always had, uh, they've always been at odds with each other. In addition, I mean, the family is basically the Italian mafia, and the Sioux is the uh, the Huang, uh, the Huang. Um, and yeah, I mean, they're they're basically the biggest mafia groups from opposite sides of the world, kind of converging in one area, which is Paragon City, and they're they're definitely going to be gunning for each other. I think uh, too, going off of that, you have uh, elements in Dark Astoria with Tub Chi, like this, who maybe becoming a bit more honorable, um, you know, still in the drug trade, but you have a more heavier role. Like they think the, the family are dishonorable, and they're they think for the good of everyone, and like you know, they should take control. That could be a big thing. They're playing in the zone too. Okay. Good question, guys. some incredibly large gates in the yeah. northeastern section of the zone that leads out, and that's how the ships get in. They just don't open. Yeah, they just don't open. It, it would be something you could do, like with Paragon, where if you go all the way south, you pop up the Talos, or you could, do the thing. you could go to Shruga if you popped up through the wall, or set a bridge, kind of how you have uh, in the going road content when you go to another zone. There's no good wall at the end, but pop up in another zone if you want to go to the bridge, there'd be another transport way instead of having another tram down there. Uh, There's definitely definite possibilities. Um, and certainly uh, uh, decisions like that impact multiple zones um, and have a lot of reverberation, especially with environment art. So I tend to be very gung-ho for that and Addison tends to give me very evil glances like she's doing right now. Um, uh, yes, it's definitely a possibility, um, and even beyond that, uh, there's always just the fact that um, uh, one of the benefits of Praetoria is that uh, other world designers that predate me and are more clever than me uh, have created uh, other alternate versions beyond just war walls and blue walls to keep players from you know going off uh, into unfinished areas where that's supposed to. So there, there are a plethora of different uh, possibilities uh, to make. Uh, yeah, we, we've looked at the waterways in uh, Paragon City a few times, and uh, Red River doesn't necessarily make the most sense. <laughs> I'll tell you what, guys, um, it is uh, 526. Uh, would you guys like to keep going, or would you like a five-minute break before the next panel? Keep going. Keep going. All right, we'll keep going then. So the question <laughs> I think he was asking us. <laughs> Infinite support was created well before Croatoa, so you didn't really have a lot of the uh, mob tools that you were able to deploy in Croatoa, where you can have flying patrols of witches, and you have different factions beyond just uh, Fifth Column versus Council beating each other up. You have lots of areas in the zone that are just static mobs just sitting there waiting for somebody to stumble across them. Instead of having people like patrolling their way through all of the marshalling yards for all those cargo containers and everything, where you could have different factions just walking through those, patrolling those areas so that they'd be more dynamic and not as static as they are currently. You could even do things where you have sky raiders who would be patrolling the skies of a part of the zone. Uh, we, we definitely have a much more robust toolbox uh, to work with, um, especially when it comes down to the type of spawns, the animations. Uh, we just have a lot more assets. Um, and it's actually just uh, pretty much a given for any um, zone that we, we, we revamp um, is, is to bring to modernize those spawn devs. I, I know uh, working on uh, Dark Story when I first looked in there, uh, almost every single one of the spawns in there was a, uh, basically a, a men's choir of uh, zombies until they realized someone was looking at them and then they do the... Yeah. Uh, we, have, we have a lot of things. Uh, the sky's, uh, I wouldn't say the sky's limit, but we definitely have a lot more. Um, so any revamp you see, you can expect to see much more uh, dynamic uh, spawn behavior. Okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to call this panel at that point. Uh, but it's all right, save your questions, because uh, coming up after a couple minutes short break while we switch out panelists and uh, the, uh, the, pre the presentation, um, uh, we have the lore panel. Which...
much. Uh, round of applause for our panelists. Uh, like a two-minute break, and I'll call you guys all back in a little bit.